According to the Bible, the foundation of Christianity is based on a lie, and the God of the Bible is not our true creator. Open up your Bible and go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. It reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. Who is us? Who is our? The common response is that God is speaking to the Holy Trinity, or something similar. That's not the truth. The reason there's plurality there is because the word that was used in the Hebrew text, the original text, was not God. It was Elohim. And Elohim is a plural word, meaning sons of God. So, if you go back and read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 with that in mind, now you're reading, the sons of God said, let us make mankind in our image. Who were these sons of God? Well, they were the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki were a group of extremely developed and powerful beings. In ancient Sumeria, modern day Iraq, these beings were revered as gods and they were the rulers of the heavens and the earth. Zachariah Sitchin was an author who brought the Anunnaki to the forefront in the 1970s. He was also a prolific biblical scholar. He didn't intend to disprove the Bible, he wanted to bring more accuracy to it. He did this by implying that we were looking at it in a skewed way. After many years of research, he concluded that the answer to the true origin of humanity came from the Sumerian tablets. Those tablets claim that the Anunnaki arrived on Earth approximately 430,000 years ago and created humanity for slavery and worship. Sitchin then goes on to state that the books in the Bible are nothing more than modified versions of the Anunnaki stories. The truth is that the Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity and Islam are all based on even more ancient mythologies which they have altered for their own purposes. You see, the individuals who wrote the first Bible were from the Middle East. They lived in a time that was closer to the Babylonian and ancient Sumerian eras. So the Sumerians were their ancestors. They knew their stories by heart. So the individuals who wrote the original Bible were writing it with the Anunnaki stories in mind. Let's quickly look at some examples. The Anunnaki are described as giants in stature with wings on their backs. The biblical stories about giants and earth were referring to these extraterrestrials. In Genesis, the Bible says, After he sent the men out, God placed angels and a flaming sword that turned in all directions east of the Garden of Eden. He placed them there to guard the way to the Tree of Life. The angels guarding the Garden of Eden in the Old Testament are nothing more than the Anunnaki. The story of Noah's Ark, the story of Adamu and Tiamat, of Kin and Abel, the creation story and so much more are Sumerian in origin. Let's go back to the beginning. Nibiru was a great red planet, not too dissimilar from Mars and its trajectory around our sun exposed it to solar radiation and consequently it led to the destruction of its protective layer. The first king of Nibiru was called Anu and he had a wife called Antu. Anu had many sons with many Anunnaki women. The two most important were half-brothers Enki and Enlil who were the most eager to win the throne of Nibiru. Another Anunnaki male named Enlalu led a revolt and became the king of Nibiru. Anu eventually challenged Enlalu to a duel to try to win back his throne. During the battle, Enlalu was defeated and Anu became king again. Enlalu was to be escorted to the place to be judged, but because he was afraid of dying, he escaped onto a celestial chariot and left Nibiru. Alalu aimlessly crossed space. In the emptiness of the universe, he was met by a celestial being called Gaga, which was probably a star or a planet. 
Gaga highlighted a shortcut to cross an obstacle that no resident of Nibiru dared to face, Saturn. This planet was considered the most evil and detestable of them all. With much difficulty, Alalu managed to overcome Saturn's magnetic pull. When hope was almost lost, a massive breakthrough was made. Gaga led him towards the third closest planet from the sun. A true paradise had been found. Most of the planet was covered with water and large portions of the land harboured a huge diversity of animal and plant life. Alali's chariot was fitted with gold detection technology and he quickly realised that the planet was abundant with gold. Alalu cried with joy when he realised that he had found the metal that was so desired by the residents on Nibiru. He dubbed the planet Ki, but it later became known as Planet Earth. He chose to land in a region that he named Idiru. We now know it as Mesopotamia. He saw that the sky was white blue and there were waters and mountains all around. And soon, a white sphere rose along with the darkness, the Kingu, or Moon, companion of the Earth. The next morning, Alalu aligned the Tablets of Fate in the direction of Nibiru. The Tablets of Fate are described as pieces of a spaceship. They are considered sacred objects that show the destiny of man. There are certain points in the story that suggest that these tablets are used to send and receive messages at a distance. They are also used as a GPS navigation guide. It is not impossible, bearing in mind that these people are highly advanced, that the technology that we have nowadays mirror what they had in their hands thousands of years ago. Alalu aligned the tablets of fate to find the direction of Nibiru. He activated the word talker and sent the message to his planet. Anu and the court were surprised to see that he was still alive. In the celestial court, Anu's son Enlil took the floor. He plays a tremendous role in our society today. Enlil demanded proof that there was gold and Alalu complied. He used an advanced technology called a tester and sampler which was powered by crystals to send all of the necessary proof to the court of the wise men on Nibiru. Among the court was Anu's other son, Enki. He took the lead and wished to travel to Earth to be an intermediary between Alalu and Anu. Enlil was against the idea of Enki travelling to Earth, but there was nothing he could do. Enki was extremely headstrong and there was no stopping him. Enki boarded with the warriors and they headed to their destination in search of hope. Their ship suffered from a lack of water and fire which they used as fuel. So they descended briefly onto a planet called Lamu, Mars, to refuel. Enki and the warriors continued on and eventually landed on Earth. They followed the sea until they found Alalu's chariot. They anchored their spaceship in the waters and quickly began to set up camp on the land. They sent a message of arrival to Nibiru, reporting on their adventures and their successful journey. The Anunnaki saw the beauty of the sun and its fire over the earth, and when it retreated it gave way to the moon. None of the Anunnaki men and women could sleep on this day. They all waited for a new dawn. And so was the first day on earth. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day.